Today we've gone for a two camera setup because not only are we talking about the Tesla Model Y, we're talking specifically about all of the settings inside of this main screen. Anybody that's about to purchase the Tesla must know all of these critical bits of information because it is gonna make sure your car performs significantly better and drives just the way you need it to. So let's dive into this screen and talk about all of the Tesla settings you need to know. First of all, to access your actual settings, you have to come down to the bottom right hand corner and press on the little vehicle. So for me personally, what I've done is set up the lights to auto, but I have not turned the auto high beams on. The auto high beams will only come on when you're driving on full autopilot because these high beams actually aren't that great in the city and will blind some people. So make sure you have your auto high beams off during everyday drive. Next on the list is the auto wipers. Now I do believe the auto wipers are pretty good from a day-to-day -day basis, so I do keep them on auto personally. The mirrors and recording, steering and everything here is where you're gonna have to set up your car first from day dot and it will automatically save it as you change the settings in there. If we come across to our pedals and steering, you're gonna see a couple more settings that are a bit more complicated than most people would think. So you obviously have your chill and your standard mode. If you're ever losing way too much battery and you're thinking to yourself, why am I losing way too much? Change your acceleration over to chill. It will be significantly slower. It'll drive like a grandma's car, but it will save a lot of battery. So it is something worth switching between if you do need to actually preserve as much as possible. I find the steering mode set into comfort to be one of the easiest and most practical. It's not too soft, not too hard, and you can get around from day to day quite well. I do recommend having your stopping mode on hold because if you are on a hill, it will hold your vehicle the whole time. Whereas if you have it as roll or creep, it'll kind of act more like a regular car. Creep and roll could get you into a bit of trouble because they could roll away from the hill, especially if you are on a very steep incline. So I always recommend the hold feature. Coming down to charging, and as you can see, my vehicle is currently charging. It's at 95% charge as we speak, with about an hour and a half left. It is using the 15 amp tail, so it does charge a little bit faster than the standard GPOs. However, here is where you can see Set your maximum charging capacity. For my vehicle, you see there isn't a trip in a day setting, it's just 50 to 100%, basically indicating that you want to keep your battery over 50% at all times. For us, it is recommended that you keep your battery charged to 100 as often as possible. So if you need to charge it, simply come across, slide this little slider all the way to 100 and you're good to go. You can play and adjust these scheduled settings for the start time in your actual app as well. So our off-peak period here is 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we charge during 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. most times and we schedule our depart times accordingly. This means basically if we plug it in at 8.30, 8.45, it won't start automatically charging until 9 a.m., which makes sure we don't spend absurd amount of power for no reason. Now, once you get into autopilot, it gets a little bit more complicated and it starts to change how your car drives. First of all, auto steer on beta is what you're gonna to wanna to use to activate the basic autopilot features. The full self-driving visualization preview doesn't give you anything special. It just changes what you see on the screen here. So when you're driving, you'll see little bins and people and road markings. Whereas if you turn that off, it'll be a very simplistic kind of 3D generated viewpoint on the right hand side. When you're on autopilot, I like it having set to speed limit rather than current speed because that way you can avoid significant fines in the city. When you go to fixed or percentage, you can also offset your variable speed. So let's say the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour and you've got it fixed, you can adjust that to one, two, three, or even four kilometers as you see fit and like to drive. So for me, I'm not too fast either way. I'm happy for it to be on zero. And as you see up the top, whenever you change something, it automatically saves. Scrolling a little bit further down, we have our automatic blind spot camera, which basically once you turn on your indicator, it will turn the automatic blind spot camera on. The blind spot collision warning chime, again, is just another chime in the car. It is helpful, so I do recommend keeping that on. The speed limit warning, I personally hate it. I don't need to be reminded that it's the speed limit every two seconds. It's the forward collision warning set to medium, I think is appropriate because if you go too late or too early, it just makes way too many noises. Hence why we're gonna get later on into Joe mode because as you'll see, Teslas just like to make lots of noise. So forward collision warning set to medium is perfect. Lane departure warning as well is great. 
I don't like it on assist because I don't like the car automatically jerking back into the lane, especially when there's a lot of lanes on the actual road. It sometimes gets a bit confusing for the vehicle and sometimes pulls into the lane for no particular reason. Now for the bottom, I don't like the traffic aware cruise control chime and I don't like the green traffic light chime just because there's way too many sounds in this car. So moving across the locks, you're gonna have all your phones and all your keys set up directly in here. So when you get your physical key, you can automatically set up your phone keys and then you can also adjust all of your child locks, your safety locks, how and what happens when you walk away from the vehicle. You can exclude it from the home. You can automatically unlock in park, which is a very good feature because otherwise you have to come up to the top and tap this little lock button, which is a little bit fiddly. So as soon as you put it in park, the car automatically unlocks. It's very useful for helping people get in and out of the car. I do like to leave the car left open notification on for both doors and windows because there has been times where we've left a phone in the car, some Somewhere in a bag, somewhere in the back, or we've just walked away just not far enough, been sitting at lunch and it hasn't locked. So this is a great way to make sure your car is either completely locked or that everything is completely closed. Because you don't actually have a key or a start button or anything getting in and out of the Tesla, I do like to keep the lock confirmation sound on. So when you're generally walking away from the vehicle, you're gonna hear that lock sound beep and you're gonna know in the back of your head your car has locked. At the very bottom, you can close all of your windows as you lock the vehicle, which is really good if you have a winter environment. It means your vehicle will never get wet and you've left the window open, or the kids have accidentally left a window open in the back. Next, we have our lights, and we touched on this a little bit. So first of all, headlights, definitely on auto. Dome lights are your two lights up here in the vehicle. I don't actually like them turning on when I get into the car because this screen is so bright. So therefore I have them on off. I do have the ambient lights turned on and my auto turn signals off. Now, this is a recent update to the Tesla where it automatically turns your signals off and on if you've left them on for a little bit too long. I just think the tech isn't there yet. Couple more software updates, maybe I'll turn it back on, but for now it's just way too glitchy. The last couple of settings are obviously auto high beams. Like I said, the auto high beams just aren't there yet, but potentially with a few more software updates, they'll be good to go. Headlights after exit are great because it means you can walk away and still see where you're going. And the steering wheel lights, well, there's not too much in there, so you can turn them off or on, it doesn't really matter. Next we have our display, and I like to keep mine on auto because as the sun's up, it stays nice and bright. When the sun goes down, it converts to dark mode, which isn't too glaring in your face, especially when all of the lights in your vehicle at nighttime are this screen. It's a little bit of a different experience driving at nighttime, so when it automatically turns to dark mode, is greatly appreciated. If you ever need to clean your screen, this is where you find it. You just tap the clean screen button, It'll allow you to touch and do whatever you want on the screen without affecting it. And then you simply press and hold for three seconds and it will turn back to the full screen. You can also change some of your voice recognition settings, your time settings, your energy display. For example, percentage or distance, you can also just simply tap that up the top there to change it from percentage to kilometers. So that one doesn't have to go all the way into your settings. If we come across to our trip, we don't really use this one too much anymore because now with these new cards, you can simply swipe across and it will tell you some great features on the side. So as we swipe across, we have all of our trip settings there. Navigation is very simple. Auto navigation to home or work, next upcoming calendar event, that one is great. It means you can simply just jump in your car. It'll automatically pull up the next calendar event and away you go. The trip planner is especially good as well because once you're driving long distances, you want it to automatically prepare the battery for supercharging. So keeping that one up and activated is a great way to go. Safety features, when we go through this, you always wanna have your sentry mode on. Now, sentry mode does use a little bit of battery. So if you wanna conserve battery, you can exclude it from home, work, or your favorites. And you can change this from camera-based detection to only sensor-based detection. Now, sensor-based detection obviously will only pick up the most active and most close calls, whereas camera-based will give you hundreds and hundreds of activities throughout the day. So that one's a personal choice. I keep it on camera-based just in case. When you first get into your Tesla, you're not gonna have the on-honk dash cam activated, which in an emergency, you're gonna wanna have activated. If anybody's about to get into an accident and you slam on your brakes, hit your horn, it's automatically gonna save that dash cam footage so it's never rewritten. So that feature is incredibly useful and I recommend turning it on straight away. You can turn off the mobile access to your cameras from inside so nobody can actually see what's going on. Pin to drive is very simple. You put in a pin just in case somebody's found your key and you wanna lock them out. 
glove box pin again safety feature I don't personally use it because there's nothing in there but you can activate it if you need if you want to limit the speed of the vehicle for example if you've got a student driver or a learner driver you can limit the speed to 100 k's an hour so they can't actually go over it so it's quite a nice little feature down the bottom in safety as well you'll find cabin overheat protection this one is really really critical now obviously teslas are predominantly glass roofs and glass ceilings so you don't want them to crack you don't want them to overheat and you're happy to sacrifice a little bit of battery for it i've got the cabin overheat protection on and there's more in depth settings into that in the app so if you want to actually adjust the temperature it kicks in on you can change that in the app whereas here it just makes sure the glass doesn't crack on extremely hot days now like i mentioned before joe mode is incredibly useful and incredibly powerful because the car makes so many noises so many sounds so joe mode basically just dulls them down limits them and make sure you only hear the most important ones okay we're getting through it now we're almost at the very end service is down the bottom and it tells you your recommended psi for your tires so for us 42 psi all round 41 is okay i'm happy to live with that one and i can inflate them when i need to you can also have all of your service manuals your tire configurations and your deep 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 dive settings down the bottom in service however most of this stuff you probably won't touch ever in your life second last is your software update and this is also where you can change the actual color of your tesla if you wanted to so for us i'm happy with the white car because it is a white car but if you get it wrapped painted or anything you can come to software change the color of the vehicle and move on down the bottom we also have our software update preferences and i like to have mine on advanced so i get the latest software updates every single time last but not least is our upgrades if we wanted to update to premium connectivity we could simply swipe across and update automatically if you want to upgrade to the full self-driving mode you can do that in the app and not in the vehicle because it takes a little bit more time and obviously costs a lot more money so they want to get that done properly anyway that's all for me today guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you smash that like button down below and also hit the subscribe button for more great tesla content but like i said that is all from me so i'll see you next monday